i. As a series, we wanted to update on what's happening in the IEEE 802.11 BN leading to Wi-Fi 8. This is uh, part of uh, a series which will try and track down what is happening to this evolving set of standards. My name is uh, Srikant and I am with NanoCell Networks. So as I mentioned, this is the July 2024 uh, version. There is an earlier version where you can get the backdrop of uh, how 11BN leading to Wi-Fi 8 has kind of fixed certain goals. Here I'm going to talk about some features which appear to be agreed upon in the specification uh, framework document. And I'll pick up a couple of features to maybe sort of spend more time on uh, as they appear to have some interesting implications. Remember that there are lots of features under discussion and we really do not know the ultimate sort of uh, feature finalization and then of course that uptake and their impact. So what are some new things which are of interest? I think one thing which is of interest is an enhanced power save coming to the client side, uh, which is inspired, I would say, actually by the EMLSR uh, technique in multi-link operations. And uh, of course, also has an inspiration in the spatial multiplexing or MIMO power save. So a combination of these things are coming because power is now considered very important. Multi-AP was actually uh, included in the discussions in 11B leading to Wi-Fi 7, but kind of postponed to Wi-Fi 8. So we are seeing things getting at least on paper as to how we could go about coordinated spatial reuse, coordinated beam forming. I think it's a long way to go before we get something stable on that one. There are also interesting ideas on how to use large bandwidth channels more efficiently, uh, especially when the primary channel is blocked. So that is non-primary channel access. Uh, lots of uh, thoughts on distributed RUs allocation, um, something which came in 11N, unequal MCS usage in spatial streams. Of course, we've always had the extended range modes in 11AX. Uh, LDPC enhancements. So, and there are other things as well. I'm going to just going to pick upon this and this for a little bit of discussion uh, for this short presentation. So, uh, what is the thought behind the client enhanced power save? The idea is that um, you know clients could be 80 megahertz, 160 megahertz, one two spatial streams. There could be more, but I think we are talking about some numbers which are typically found. The idea is that clients don't want to waste power by opening up their big bandwidths and also processing on multiple received spatial streams unless it's absolutely needed, okay? So idea is that after they associate and give the capabilities to the access point, they'll basically fall back to this 20 megahertz one spatial stream mode and unless they are specifically prompted by an initial control frame like an RTS, they're just going to stay and listen there. So this is a, a listen state or a state where they are not in power save as in 802.11 power save, but they are just in listen mode where they'll hopefully drain less out of their batteries and still be ready for the high bandwidth uh, receptions when they need it. Of course, when they want to transmit, they obviously can use the, the higher bandwidth and higher uh, spatial stream mode, okay? So idea is use these power guzzling methods only when it's absolutely needed. And if you look at it, it's a combination of ideas from spatial multiplexing power save, uh, EMLSR, it's more like an EMLSR applied over single link, okay? Um, there are challenges, so lots of discussion on how do we manage this, etc. is happening. There are also discussions on how APs can save power, not it agreed, but at least on the client side, it's agreed that 
uh, we can allow clients to stay on this 20 megahertz 1SS till they get a uh, specific alert from the AP. I think this can be useful and interesting for many clients, uh, especially you know, battery operated devices, which is probably the majority. The other technique is also the more efficient use of bandwidth as we move on to 80, 160, and even 320 megahertz. Uh, for a long time in Wi-Fi, the holy grail has been that the primary 20 megahertz has to be free if we have to use the other secondaries, right? Unfortunately, in some cases, when the primary channel is not available, the secondary channels, even when they are available, don't get utilized. And so you have this access delay before you can get to use the bandwidth. So what 11B and Wi-Fi 8 is proposing is, hey, even if the primary 20 megahertz is not free, you can still go ahead and use just the secondary, okay? And this is, of course, there are rules on how and what you can do, etc. But this opens up the ability for us to use, especially for the large bandwidth, pieces of the bandwidth more efficiently and has an impact on the access latency. So I'm hoping that especially as we look at the 80, 160, 320 megahertz usage, uh, this will hopefully improve some of the usage of the bandwidth, which might have been restricted due to this 20 megahertz primary lock, okay? So these two power save and non-primary channel access are more or less agreed upon. I think some details and of course, various uh, uh, nitty gritties have to be worked out and uh, we will see other features coming up, so stay tuned. So for more, please take a look at our website. We also offer courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you.